Hi everyone, this is Steve Losh, and today I'm going to do a screencast, or a series of screencasts, about a whole bunch of things. Um, sorry, let me get that out of the way. Uh, it's going to be about Vim, Clojure, metrics, a whole bunch of stuff. <coughs> um, okay, so if you follow me on Twitter, um, you probably know that I've been working on, or a while ago, I made a little site called New Seasons. Um, and basically all it is, is a little way... Sorry, let me type my password. Um, so New Seasons is a, th is a little Clojure web app. Uh, it's written in Clojure with uh, the Noir framework. Um, and all it does is lets you search for TV shows. Oh, can't type today. Um, and it'll let you add them to your list. And basically, every time you add a show to your list, uh, it records it. And then whenever iTunes releases a new season of that television show, it'll email you. Because, um, you know, if, you're, <clears throat> if you, you have a season pass to a show, uh, Apple will email you when a new episode comes out. But there's no way to get emailed when a new season comes out. And as you can see, right now I have 26 shows on my lists. And, you know, I don't want to have to search iTunes 26 times uh, whenever I want to know if something new has come, up, come out. So, um, yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, and today, I'm going to be adding some metrics to it. Uh, and so what are metrics? Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, again, you'll know that I just released a closure wrapper around Coda Hale's awesome metrics library. Um, it's just a really thin wrapper. It doesn't do any hard work. It just makes it more closure-y. Um, so it's at github.com slash sjl slash metrics dash closure, as you can see here. Um, and there's some documentation on read the docs. You can just get to the link from there. And I'm not going to go into exactly how to do all of it. Um, basically, this screencast is just to show you um, how I work with Clojure. Um, and I'm still pretty new to Clojure, so uh, I might be doing some things that are unnecessary. So if I am, just leave a comment and let me know. Um, or if you see something in one of these screencasts that you really like and you want to know how I did it and I didn't explain it, just leave a comment or find me on Twitter and let me know. Um, I'm going to try to keep these screencasts to under 15 minutes so that I can upload them to YouTube instead of Vimeo. Um, so, yeah, we're going to move right along. Um, all right. So, to get started, I'm going to open a terminal window. And I'm going to be starting from scratch. I'm going to even, you know, clone down the repository, um, just so that you can see that I'm not doing anything tricky here, and you can do this with exactly the same steps. Um, you just need to have Vagrant installed first. If you've never used Vagrant, let me show you the website, it's basically a little way to manage uh, virtual boxes. Right, um, just lets you give you gives you a command line tool to manage uh, Oracle VirtualBox VMs. Um, it's really handy. It automatically provisions things for you um, if you write puppet scripts and such. Um, so all you need to do to do the same stuff I'm doing is gem install Vagrant if you have Ruby, and then you'll have the Vagrant command. And everything else, uh, you're all good. So I'm going to go into source. I'm going to clone it down. Um, I have it on GitHub and Bitbucket. I'm going to use Bitbucket because I prefer Mercur Mercurial. Um, one second. So I'm going to clone down. Oh, it help if I type the clone command. Oh. Okay. All right. Let me make this a little bigger so you can see what's going on here. Okay. So I cloned down the repository. CDN. LS. Okay. Got my code. Now, um, if you haven't used Vagrant before, this you might not understand exactly what I'm doing here, um, but just bear with me for now. Um, the trick to this is that uh, I have to use host-only networking, and you'll see why in a little bit, um, but just trust me, for right now, uh, just accept that you need to use this with Vagrant, so um, let me do that. And I'm going to start up uh, the Vagrant box, so Vagrant up, and it'll import the box and provision it with Puppet, and that's going to take a minute. So. Um, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to open OmniGraffle and just kind of sketch out how New Seasons is laid out, um, just to give you some kind of idea uh, what it looks like. Basically, um, if this sheet of paper here is my laptop, so my development machine, <coughs> um, inside of that is going to be running the Vagrant VM, right? It's uh, running Ubuntu 10.4. So there's going to be a Vagrant virtual machine, right? And I'm going to be developing in MacVim. Uh, let me drag that over 
here. And that's going to be on my laptop. So I'm not going to be using Vim inside the virtual machine. Uh, I just find that to be just a huge pain in the ass. Um, so we're not going to do it that way. We're going to run MacVim on our host OS. Okay? And I'm also going to be using my browser and my host OS, obviously. So Firefox. Okay? So MacVim and Firefox are on the laptop. And then there's this Vagrant VM here, right? And Vagrant, if you've used it, you'll know that it automatically sets up shared folders. So um, the actual code is going to be visible both on the VM and on the host machine, right? So here's the code. It kind of lives on both at the same time. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, I'll just do this. Um, new Seasons uses Redis to store data. Um, I could have used anything. Uh, I just chose Redis because it was quick and easy, um, and this site isn't really important. Um, but you can use whatever you want, obviously. Okay, so Redis is running inside the VM. Right, so if I'm working on a couple different sites and they all use Redis, I don't need to worry about starting and stopping servers, right? I just start and stop whatever VM I'm working on, and everything just magically appears the way I need it to. Okay, so inside of there, this is the tricky part. We're going to run a Swank server. Okay, and so that's going to be running inside the VM, right? And that's going to be what's running the actual code, right? So there's a Swank server. Put that up the top. Okay. And there's going to be a couple of things going on inside of there. Uh, the first is that it's actually going to be running the Noir web server, which I think Noir uses Jetty. Um, yeah, it definitely uses Jetty. Right, so that's it's going to be running the web server. Right, and so that's running inside the Swank process. And so the web server is what's going to talk to the database, you know, do all this stuff. It's basically the application. Okay, and so Firefox is going to hit the VM, and it's going to go through and eventually. Um, passes through Swank, and it's going to talk to the web server, because the web server is going to be listening on port 8000, you know. Um, okay, so what also is going to be in there is a REPL, um, and that's what we're going to use in MacFam to just try out ideas and uh, evaluate code really easily. Um, so let me move you over here. Sorry, this is going to get a little cluttered, but I just want to try to give you some kind of graphical overview of what the hell is going on. Uh, so MacVim's so MacVim going to be editing the code, right? Um, the Swank server is also going to be looking at the code, right? Because it's going to be loading it. Uh, and MacVim's also going to be talking to Swank and uh, the REPL inside of it. Um, this is an oversimplification, uh, but it's all it's good enough for now. Um, and then there's also going to be one more thing running inside the Swank server, which we're going to get to later. Um, just call it a, a mystery, mystery component for right now. Okay? So, that's the general idea. Um, it's a little complicated, but uh, don't worry, it'll, it'll just work for the most part. Okay? All right. So it looks like Vagrant has finished uh, provisioning. So what I'm gonna do is SSH into Vagrant. Okay, I'm gonna CD to wherever I put this thing. Oops, sorry, I think it's slash Vagrant. Yeah, that's the shared folder, right? So if we look here, Got to get two, two things open. Okay. New seasons. All right. So we have the same code in both places, right? Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do here is first I need to install Swank Closure inside the Vagrant VM. Um, uh, the the um, the New Seasons repository has a puppet script for installing Line again. See right there. Um, but it doesn't install the plugin. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's not worth the extra trouble to puppet script that. I'm um, can just run one command. So I'm gonna line plugin install swank closure, and I'm gonna use version 1.2.1. Um, the trick here is that if you're using MacVim um, with SlimV, uh, you have to have the same version of swank closure on in SlimV and on the VM. Otherwise, things just go horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, so just trust me on that one. Just uh, run the same version. And in this case, I'm running 121. So Lonnie again is going to install that. It's going to take a second, but it shouldn't be too bad. we got about two minutes in this, this edition of the screencast, so I'll try to hurry things up. Don't worry, we'll get to actually coding pretty soon. Alright, so I got Swank Closure here. I'm going to run the line depths. Pull down the dependencies. 
and it's going to take a second. Um, while we're doing that, if I look at the Vagrant file, you can see that I set up the host-only networking to point at this address. So if I copy that, um, I should be able to ping that from this machine, right? And that ping is hitting the Vagrant VM, okay? Okay, I don't need that. Um, so what I'm going to do is over here, um, in Firefox, I'll be eventually, once I get the stuff set up, I'm going to be hitting port 8000. Right now the server's not running, so it can't find it, but um, that is trying to talk to the VM. Okay. Yeah, it takes a second to pull down all the depths, sorry. Come on. Okay. Um, and now, just like any Noir project, you should be able to do a line run. And we don't have to worry about starting Redis or anything. Oh, oh I need to, uh, yeah. So, I purposely did this. I need to copy this settings file. Um, this is just with my New Seasons project. I set up a separate settings file. Oh, sorry, I need to copy the Vagrant one. Okay. Ugh, so used to oh my Z show. Alright, now I should be able to turn that on. And it should work. Um, like I was saying, you don't need to start Redis manually or anything. The puppet scripts take care of that for you, which is the really awesome thing about Vagrant. And so if I refresh, alright, I got the site up. Um, so that's where I'm gonna cut off this screencast. I'm gonna just Stop the video and start recording again and keep going. So I'll see you in a sec.